Greetings, Captains. I am your host, Brent Justice. Welcome to my gaming channel, Justice Gaming, and I am in Star Trek Online today during the 14th anniversary event called Both Worlds to play a new mission that has been released along with this new content. This is an actual event. There's a lot of stuff to do with the 14th anniversary, a new ship to grind for, all of that. But today's video is simply going to be about playing the new mission. And this is my let's play of that new mission. So I hope you all are having a blessed day today. I have a hot coffee in front of me to enjoy while I play. Let me know what you are drinking as you watch down below. So as I mentioned, this is part of the Star Trek Online 14th anniversary event. It is called Both Worlds and there is a new mission to play which i am about to play and it is called scorpion's abyss now the last mission was called taken by surprise so in that mission the mirror universe borg came over fighting a multiversal war to dominate basically i believe kumarke was kidnapped for whatever nefarious purpose we had a new ally come to our aid, and I forget their name, but I'm sure we will be reintroduced to them in this mission. And I'm just looking forward to seeing where this goes. If you have not seen my playthrough of Taken by Surprise, I do have that on this channel as well. But today is going to be all about Scorpion's Abyss. I'm going to play that, and we're going to see what happens. I am playing today on my primary engineering character called Borg Drone. That is his designation, that is his name, Borg Drone. He is a liberated Borg, and I am flying on an interesting starship that I cannot wait to show you all. It is the Kirk Temporal Heavy Battlecruiser, 32nd century tier six starship. I have really been enjoying this ship and I cannot wait to show it to you in battle. This will be the first time for you all seeing it, and in the future I will do a starship review on it. But let's jump into the new mission, shall we? Scorpion's Abyss. Enter fluidic space to track down a dimensional vortex opening there that the Aetherians are incapable of closing. Okay, so that's the ally, the Aetherians. Cordial greetings. I request your presence at a gathering on Station Deep Space Nine. We shall discuss the Borg Kingdom problem and potential solutions. We live at a perilous time, friend, but recall our axiom. Through harmony, we are secure. Through unity, we are strong. Together we will strive to defeat our mutual enemy and establish peace for one and all. The Aetherians. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to look at the rewards. Somebody did mention... Before I play this, don't look at the rewards yet. It's a bit of a spoiler. So I I, I know that I just scrolled down, but I didn't look at it. So I'm, I remembered, oh, don't look at that. So I'm not going to look at the rewards yet until we're finished playing. Maybe that's a spoiler. I don't know. But just to be sure, I'm not going to do that. All right. So we've got to go to Deep Space Nine. I'm just going to transwarp straight there. We're going to get this show on the road. I am so excited to play this new mission. I know it came out a little bit ago I'm just now able to get back into uh, recording some games and so forth so yeah should be good and I've got all kinds of buffs going on <laughs> look at all that craziness okay begin scorpions abyss and obviously I'm seeing from the screen here we've got Esri Dax so I guess that's a spoiler but I mean it's in the screenshot and I'll talk about that. Stay tuned also toward the end of this video, uh, this playthrough, and I will give my full review for this mission and what I thought of it and all my thoughts on that. But yes, again, my character, Borg Drone, engineer, liberated Borg, and I am flying the Kirk Temporal Battle Cruiser. It should be pretty exciting. And uh, let's see, like we got a Tholian here. Interesting. Welcome to Deep Space Nine. Tassin Fey, the leader of the Aetherian starship Harmony, will be making a presentation soon, alongside one of our finest captains. While you're waiting, 
I encourage you to meet with the specialists here to get their insights on the upcoming operation. Now, I do have to say that I really enjoy uh, the new aesthetic of the Aetherians and their starship, the Harmony. It reminds me of, like, the Tet from the Oblivion movie. It looks like that kind of a ship, but it's really cool with those rings that, like, flow in and out of it. I don't know. I just like the design. I think it's very uh, alien, futuristic, and a very good aesthetic. Okay, let's talk to our Tholian. Oh, yeah, Bright Eyes. Okay, I remember. The summit will begin soon. While I remain optimistic, it is not a feeling shared by many of my superiors in the assembly. Tholians are often slow to place trust in outsiders. While the Aetherians did provide timely aid against the Borg Kingdom, their extra-dimensional origins raised a number of questions within our leadership ranks. We know very little about them. While others may place their trust in them, it will not be easily won with my people. Yeah, the Tholians do not like being uh, having the multiverse being meddled with other dimensions. They really don't like it. They're against it. <laughs> so, uh, let's talk to... Oh, wait a minute. I thought Kumarke was kidnapped. No, I'm remembering wrong. Kumarke was a Borg, right? She was, an she was the assimilated Borg kingdom queen or something, right? Is that how it was? I, I'm i trying to remember. Remember, it's been a very long time since I played the last mission, so I'm just trying to remember how it went. Good to see you, my friend. It seems we're about to set off on another bold undertaking soon. Indeed we the are. The arrival of the Aetherians was rather fortunate for those in the Alliance. Adding a new ally against the Borg Kingdom may well tip the odds into our favor. Okay, they're quite capable. I suppose we'll learn of the action plan soon enough. I do hope it's a good one. Maybe I'm just crazy about Kumarke. Maybe I'm wrong. There was There's something about Kumarke and the Borg. I know it. I just don't know why I know it or how I know it or what it is. <laughs> We've held off the Borg Kingdom before, and we're ready to do it again. Our new allies were eager to join the fight, and I certainly can't argue with the results. Their starships are impressive. The Aetherians have been in non-stop talks with the Alliance command staff since they arrived here. I have a feeling that whatever they've cooked up is going to be big. Maybe on a scale we haven't seen since the Iconian War. Well, it may have to be. The threat of the Borg Kingdom is not to be one Just taken lightly. Just heard from Ops. The briefing is about to start. I'm ready. Do I stand on the table? Let's go. Ezri Thank you all Dax. for coming. The attacks from the Borg Kingdom are a threat to us all. We've been working on a strategy with the Aetherians. Several tactical initiatives are underway as we speak, but there is a new critical issue to deal with. A reality vortex has appeared in what you call fluidic space. That region has a unique extra-dimensional nature. No kidding. It connects to every point in the multiverse. If our enemy controls that vortex, they will be able to attack anywhere at any time. Unfortunately, Fluidic space disrupts Aetherian neural processes. So, the task of closing that vortex falls to us. I'll be leading a strike force to fluidic space. Her eyes are a little big. Down. Hopefully, we'll achieve our objectives before hostile forces arrive. We will do what we must to succeed. Thank you for your time. I, I, I hate to say this. I would usually save this kind of thing for the final review, but her... Uh, May I speak with you for a moment? Her, uh visual aesthetic here almost looks like a cartoon to me like it's a bit cartoonish her eyes are a little too big anyway we can talk about all that later uh okay oh man that alien is tall sincere greetings it is an honor to be working with an officer of such high caliber we are grateful indeed and the Alliance is grateful for your timely assistance. We have learned much throughout our conflict with the Borg Kingdom. We were happy to share our knowledge, and we have provided technology that will improve your effectiveness against them in battle. Quite so. Use. I believe you will find them most effective against our common foe. I believe Captain Dax wanted to speak with you before you depart. Are there any questions I can answer for you? Okay, well, time? let's. I'm going to go through all these options. I would like to get some background on the Aetherians. They're very cool. I wonder what universe they're from, you know. 
Most of our universe has known peace for many a galactic cycle. Our Concordium has been an integral reason for that. Occasional conflicts would occur from time to time, but most were resolved peacefully until the arrival of the Born Kingdom. Okay, how did your conflicts start? We have known of them and the nature of their universe for many cycles. We did not establish conflict due to their hateful, violent tendencies. Unfortunately, they discovered our universe. Despite our efforts to prevent conflict, they followed their nature and launched a brutal invasion into our space. For the first time in countless cycles, war came to the Ethereum Concordium. All right, how's that fight going? After many cycles of relentless conflict, we have managed to drive them back to their own universe. The cost has been terrible. Entire civilizations lost to warfare, to assimilation, and now they are here, in your universe, seeking once again to subjugate untold trillions. We will not let them succeed. What happened in our universe must not happen here. All right, um, we will do what we can to end. Do you have any more questions for me? I think that's everything. If not, Captain Dax would like to speak to you next. Okay, Captain Dax. Ezri Dax, good to see you. And she must, this must be real special for her to be back on DS9, right? Hello there. Nice to finally meet you. You've got quite the reputation. I'm glad you and your crew are joining us on the mission. We need the best and brightest against the Borg Kingdom. Like, I can recognize that it's her, an older her. It would be an older her, but not too old, because she was quite young, right? So, I don't know if I'm really in tune with the visuals. I don't know. All right, moving on. Glad to hear it. Fluidic space can be challenging, and that's before you add the Undine to the equation. They're not terribly fond of anything from our part of space-time. We're hoping to avoid any sort of incident with them, but shutting down that vortex is our top priority. That's right. Going into fluidic space means we'd have to deal with the Undine as well. Well, that's fun. The defense upgrades we received from the Ethereans are impressive. The enhancements to targeting, weapon modulation, and power systems will really make a big difference. It's nice that we They've got a buff. They've also provided extensive tactical data on Borg Kingdom vessels and defense systems. We'll be ready for action should we run into them on the mission. Okay. Once we're back on our ships, my crew will use tech on the Aventine to open a quantum singularity. We'll use that to travel to fluidic space. Are you ready to go? The Aventine. See, in that picture, she looks good. Right there, in that picture, that's normal. But when in the, the actual... The task force has assembled. That's different. That Head is the different. Following coordinates, and the Aventine will create the quantum singularity. Sorry, guys. Task force, this is docking control. Confirm your boards are green for departure. Ship is under attack. Aventine to docking control. Boards are green. Inoue reporting. Everything is green on our end. Oh, Harry Kim. Docking control. Riscava reports green for departure. We're all set over task here. Force. You are ready to for take departure. a trip to fluidic space. All ships. I won't, I won't talk about it anymore. All right, let's, uh, look how beautiful, look how beautiful my ship is. I hope you don't learn about its dangers. I really like the look of the Kirk. It is a good looking ship. It just really is. Look at that. Look, you can say what you want about the 32nd century ship designs. That one's a good one. That one is a good one. Hope your helm's up to the task of piloting in fluidic space. Local currents can get a bit unruly. Unfortunately, local conditions are generating an unusual amount of sensor interference. We're not exactly flying blind, but our scanning quality is quite limited. I don't Neither like do the I. sound of that. If the Undine find us, we might not know they're coming until it's too late. And trust me, you do not want to be on the wrong end of an Undine ambush. I don't know. I've dealt with them plenty in this game. I think I can handle it. Let's start with a coordinated long-range scan. See if we can gather more information working together. If that doesn't work, we can use deep space probes. By linking probes as we travel, we can create a sensor network. That should extend our scanning range considerably. 
Let's, Let's proceed. Made a location ahead. So I'm imagining this mission is going to be quite long, so this will probably end up being a long video today. I kind of expected that. Whoa, I'm flying right past it. Long range scan complete. We're not detecting any sign of the vortex. Neither are we. I think it's time we try plan B. Let's send out a deep space probe. Prepare probe. We're ready to go over here. Aventine and Rescava report the same. Once all the probes are deployed, we can head to their location and try another long range scan. This time, boosted by the probe sensors. Okay. What you said. Monitor the probe trajectories. No telling how local currents will affect them. Good idea. A shift in current could divert them into an obstacle. We should head to the designated location. Fascinating. I do hope to return one day to conduct research. Good luck with that. The Undine might have other ideas. I'm not going to fly past it this time. No way. Go up to it slowly. Look for any EM field spikes or drops. Could be caused by the vortex. Long range scan complete. Even with the probes, we're not finding anything. Well, let's keep looking. Probes on standby. Try these coordinates. We picked up something faint over there for a moment. Might be a sensor glitch. Or it might be what we're looking for. Take us to the designated coordinates. Let's head to the next coordinates. Geckley. I wonder if fluidic space affects Undine's sensors as much as ours. Assume they'll see us before we see them. I know those biosigns. It's a part of Geckley. And they're with us. Are they going to attach to our ship? Because that could be a problem. We're not their mother. I think we've got something. Attention, all hands. We're detecting weapon fire ahead. The Undine? Yes, and that's not all. We're also reading Borg Kingdom weapon signatures. Oh. Looks like they picked a fight with the Undine. That's an interesting fight, too. Are you sure that's wise? We might wind up fighting both the Undine and the Borg. Then again, the Undine may think twice about firing on us if we help them with the Borg. I think it's worth the risk. All right, alert. Here we go. So Everyone. much for the peaceful journey through fluidic space. Warning. I'm surprised Ship it took this attack. long to run into the Undine. Warning. Ship is under attack. Well, did that a little too soon. <laughs> Still far away. Target Borg vessels only. Do not engage the Undine unless required. Ship is under Monitor attack. Undine target. If it switches to us. An understandable precaution, Captain. Trust me. Things with the Undine can go south in a hurry. All hands, you are clear to engage the board. That's the last of the board. Show's over. Let's hope the Undine don't provide the encore. Ah, that was pretty simple, actually. Make sure Alliance I'm not rates are engaged. Commander of the Undine vessel Morano. You were not authorized to operate an our territory. Why are you here? Oh, we're here to close disruptive spatial anomalies. We know of this anomaly. It is in a nearby sector, occupied by a board unit complex. A fleet of their warships defends it. Unfortunate. We hope to deal with the anomaly before they arrived. It seems we have a common problem. And a common enemy. Wow. I propose a tactical alliance between us. We will remove Borg occupation forces from fluidic space. And yeah, that is an unexpected proposal. Like, that is very progressive of the Undine right now. Unexpected, yes. Incomprehensible. Your alliance is in fact composed of a number of former enemies. Surely a temporary expansion of said alliance is feasible. You make a good point. Let's solve our shared problems. Very well. We will travel to the provided coordinates when you are ready. A warning. Okay, here we go.
Sometimes my traits uncheck themselves, so that's why I keep checking the traits. I've been having that problem a lot lately. We stand ready to assist, Commander. Are your comrades aware of our alliance? Okay. okay. Watch out for the spheres. They may try to ram Trace your ship this. and stop destruct. The Undine weapons are fascinating. Ship is fascinating and terrifying. Glad they're not shooting at us this time. Ship is under attack. Target shields have failed. Honestly, I thought these Borg would be a lot tougher. Maybe my ship is just that good. Not bad at all. Target shield has failed. Look at that Unimatrix. That is cool looking. That is a problem. Suggestions? I believe I have a solution, but it's a risky one. Well, risk is our business, Captain. What's your plan? The Aventine was designed to fight Borg. There are a number of anti-Borg systems on board, including a quantum field focus phaser. Properly recalibrated, we could use it to create a brief transporter window through their shields. Go on. Once we've opened the window, we'll beam away teams over to the Unicomplex. They'll find and disable the shielding around the unit complex, leaving it vulnerable to attack. Okay, I see what you mean about risk, but it's Don't a good plan. Me. The unit complex has considerable defense systems in a fleet protecting it. We will need to eliminate all defenses and enemy vessels before you can safely lower your shields and use transporters. Understood. Let's make right. it happen. Moving into range now. Clear oh the local my defense nodes gosh. and watch out for reinforcements. Okay, well, we're on it. Ship is on now, fast, Captain. now it's about to get a lot tougher. Moving to defend the Aventine. Good luck, Ezri. Ship is under attack. Hard to believe the Undine can't put a dent in the unit. If there's one thing the Borg excel at, it's adaptation. Even to a weapon like the Undine Planet Killer. How terrifying! Okay, I see. I see where the. Okay, now now it's hard. Now it's hard. Can't move. Uh, tractor beam arrays, huh? Okay, we got to get through with these tractor beam arrays. Okay, well, I'm taking major damage here. I think I need to get out of here. I flew right into the hornet's nest. Huh. Oh, boy. Let's get all these, like, peripheral things destroyed these tractor beams and all this stuff that keeps holding me. I can't move with them. Can't do anything. There we go. That helps. All those tractor beams are a huge problem. Yeah, with those out of the way, now I can maneuver.
This is actually a pretty fun battle. Hey, that was kind of fun. Yeah, I enjoyed that. It was a little difficult. At, in, like, if you had a glass cannon, if you were going in with an escort, you are probably going to blow okay. up a few times. Now or never. Let's be more... I wonder what this, uh, why these are, uh, alpha? What is that all about? Huh, I don't know. Maybe that's something I have to destroy from the inside or the outside? I don't know. Yeah, what I was trying to say was, if you were like an okay. escort, I could see you blowing up a few times there. That could be a little difficult. Uh, but if you're, uh, you know, a cruiser, you've got pretty good hull or shield strength, that should be okay. I didn't blow up. But uh, take out those uh, tractor beams. Take out the tractor beams first because they held you and you couldn't do anything. You're just getting pounded on while the tractor beams are holding you. So take those out and then deal with everything else. That worked. That was kind of fun. wasn't too difficult, though. Um, although I, I will say I do have a lot of points into energy weapon damage in um, the Endeavors. I think I have like plus 44% or something. So almost maxed out energy weapon damage in my endeavor. I'll double check that. So I think that's helping a lot with my energy weapon damage. I really wanted that. And I'm that's one of the things I'm working on in the endeavors. I do my endeavors every day, by the way. I do want to get my endeavor points up. We made it. Now the real work begins. Okay, what's the plan? Whoa, everybody's a hologram. What the heck? What's happening? Two hazard teams, designations Alpha and Beta. Alpha's job is to take down the Unicomplex shield systems, while Beta will shut down the weapons and tactical arrays. If we're lucky, we'll be able to get the job done. With okay, the let's 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 read this. So Alpha and Beta. Alpha's job is going to take down the shield systems. Beta is going to take down the weapons and tactical. So one is shields, one is weapon and tactical. Which one am I? I'll provide each team with some Starfleet gear designed to mask our life signs. None of us will show up on board. Ah, that's systems. why we're glowing. We should be able to reach our destinations before they can detect us and scramble security teams. Once we've finished, we'll evac to our respective ships and regroup with the Undine forces. Uh, you know what, you though? Know, uh, this could be a golden opportunity to collect intel on these guys. I Keep love the visual. Level love the visual. Too much digging around could draw unwanted attention. Okay, one thing I'm going to do, I know that a lot of people complain that I always use, like, the same weapon, which is the Herald Projector. I love it. And I think my bridge officers are using that. No, actually, they're not. I take that back. They're using various different weapons on this character. Okay, it's my other character that they're all using that on. So this one has various different weapons, like I've got one of them has the uh, Breen Cold weapon. One has a Mako weapon, actually. Uh, you have what you have. You have a you have a proton beam. Okay. So uh, what is this adapted Mako? So they're all using different weapon types, and I know I usually use the Herald projector. I'm gonna use something different. I do have the TR 116B rifle, which does kinetic damage, right? It's supposed to be against Borg, right? So. I'm going to use that here. Now, I don't normally use this weapon. I don't like it outside of fighting the Borg, but I'm going to use it. Are there other kinetic weapons in the game? Yes. Do I have them? Maybe. I don't know what they are or where they are or where I have them, but maybe. But anyway, I'm going to use this one just to make it a little different for today's playthrough. Now, if it ends up being a real problem for me, I'm going to switch back. But I'll try it out, you know. I don't like this type of weapon. I don't like the way it fires. Uh, this bolt, I don't like bolts. But it does have the sniper, so I guess that's good too. But hey, I'm changing it up. We're going to do things a little different. Locate and deactivate shield systems. Navigate to shield control and learn info along the way. Initial battle with ISS Voyager was inconclusive. Ooh. Borg casualties, 100%. Terran vessel eluded capture. Priority alert issued. Initiate sector-wide hunt for ISS Voyager. ISS Voyager, now so that would be fun. So the ran into the mirror version of Voyager. Sounds like their Captain Janeway made them regret that. Can't say I feel sorry about it. 
That is so awesome, though. We've the, I, I don't think we have ever seen a Mirror Universe Voyager. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Uh, now, if you are not familiar with my gameplay type, I like to look around and take my time and explore. Just making sure all my traits are there. Uh, I like to explore, so um, I'm going to do that here. I don't want to miss anything. Are you certain we'll remain undetected? Okay, don't the have gear to fight him. Well in simulations. I I actually. Wait. This is experimental tech. I don't mind ah, having to fight let's them. Let's hope this plan survives contact with the enemy. Then. I would actually like to fight them. To be honest with you, I would like to uh, do some battle. Do some ground battle. Efforts to track and capture ISS Voyager successful. Borg casualties, 23%. 98% of Terran crew assimilated during combat. Directive, conduct detailed evaluation of Captain Catherine Janeway. Objective, determine tactics and command ability necessary to defeat and evade Borg forces. Assimilation is not approved. Wow. My god. Things were a lot worse for the Mirror Voyager and her crew. 98% assimilation. Studying their Janeway like a lab rat to learn how to think and fight like her. Strange they didn't do that by assimilating her. That is strange, isn't it? I suppose they wanted the pure, authentic data, unfiltered by algorithms and cybernetic interfaces. Wonder where Seven of Nine is in the Mirror Universe. I guess she would be a Borg, still. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. So far, so good. The drones can't detect us. Dax to beta team. Report. We're almost to weapon control, Captain. Good work, Commander. Proceed. Update me if anything changes. Dax out. I don't want to miss any consoles. Apparently they're hidden, so I just don't want to miss any to get information. I don't believe those drones are passive. Oh, okay. Well, Made they're not happening. <laughs> We're under attack. The Borg found us. So much for experimental tech. Defend yourselves. And be prepared to remodulate weapons. I, I don't have to remodulate this one, do I? Yeah, I am not a fan of bolt fire. I really am not. Dax to beta team. Status report, please. Weapon control is secure, but the poor captured Tanaka. Hang in there, Commander. We'll rescue him if we can. So, yeah, I'm not Fortify a... Fortify your position if possible. Weld the doors shut if you have to. I'm Alpha will reinforce you once we've taken out the shields. Really not a fan of bolt fire. I Copy mean, it's that, not team, fun. But, the energy beam yeah. the Borg are firing into the vortex. Our initial scans of it weren't conclusive. It appears to be causing a tremendous level of fluctuation within the vortex core. But to what end? Good question. I'm willing to bet it's nothing good. Right. There should be a control console somewhere in the chamber ahead. If we can find it, we might be able to learn more about the beam and its purpose. Maybe even shut it down. Okay. All right, so we're not protected by those shields anymore or that masking of our energy, so... We are going to fight the Borg at every turn now, which is fine. That wasn't difficult. I didn't even have to use any of my special abilities there. I mean, I'm ready to. I've got a ton of them. I didn't have to use any of them, though. I was hoping for something a little more difficult. Maybe we'll get that toward the end. This is a really cool graphics here, though. This is really cool looking. Just wanted to look at this. I think I see, ah, these things. See, it, this doesn't do good on those vinculums. Eh. Oh, 
Oh, we got one of uh, another one of these. All right, all right. Oh, another one. Uh, let me just look at my weapons real quick. I mean, I, I, I'm not liking the bolt fire. I'm sorry. It's just not my style of thing, but I don't have anything, I don't have anything else really ready to go for this. I probably have better weapons in my bank or something, but, you know, I don't, I don't want to bring all that up right now. This is a complex area, too. I love the red glow. Hi. Looking for the vinculum. We got one of these guys. I remember them. You have to disable their little remote vinculum thing. Okay. That console might have data on that beam. Let's check it out. Uh, let's get this we'll have to deal with those drones vinculum first. thing out. Was easy, okay. What were you able to find? Take a look. Hmm. I was afraid of something like this. Care to elaborate? It looks like the Borg are trying to modulate the vortex, control it. From what I can tell, they're trying to expand it in size. Considerable. That's a problem. It gets worse. From what I know about Undine technology. If they fire one of those planet killer beams at the Unicomplex while this beam is active, it could cause an explosion that makes a matter-antimatter reaction look tame. We need to shut this thing down before the Undine get trigger happy, or they could destroy most of fluidic space, and us with it. Can we do that here? No, unfortunately. I think I've located the console that will shut it down nearby, though. That's good, but we need to get their shields down first. <clears throat> okay. Got more. Disable the vinculum regenerator. Oh, that simple. I don't think I'm going to use my support drones. Every time I'm in my view, I keep going inside my drone. And I can't see anything. My head is inside the drone. Like, like right there. Look, I'm inside the drone. Huh. Where are they? Where are they? What am I fighting? What am I fighting? Apparently, I'm not fighting anything. Is there anything this way? Like I said, I have to explore. All I did is go in, around in a big circle. Well, that's neat. Okay, everybody, catch up. Let's go. Come on, slow pokes.
Are you bad? You're bad. One of them. Oh, they destroyed it. Okay, good. Good, you guys are actually helping. Thank you for destroying it. Wow, my bridge officers actually did something for me. Yep, there you go. Okay. Got all of them. You know what? I need I don't have I don't have you going. I need you going too. Disable that guy. And we need to get that gone. Okay, it's gone. And we're good. Yay. Yay. Let's go, everybody. I believe the door to shield control is just ahead. They're probably on lockdown by now. Not wrong. Yeah, I don't have to remodulate with this, so I'll just keep using it because I don't have to remodulate. That didn't take long. Multiple drones are closing in. Well, at least they're consistent. Got somebody spewing stuff everywhere. Doors open. Okay, I got them. Business. Got them all. Let's go, everyone. Forward. Take out that drone, the dendritic one. Well, we got a lot of them in here. Okay. Oh, I do have to remodulate. Oh, that's f interesting. I haven't had to remodulate this Room's weapon clear. before. Time to get to work. While your squad takes down the shields, the rest of us will try to deal with that beam control console nearby. Join us in the control room once you've finished here. We might be getting a lot of company soon. Of the Borg variety. Captain Dax, this is Beta Team. Weapon control is secure. Well done, Commander. Proceed what? with your mission. Wonder why I had to remodulate. Shields will be down shortly. 
Dax out. I imagine we're gonna get attacked here soon. Okay, something's happening. I didn't deactivate all of them. Why are all the Borg looking at me? Funny. Um, I like how expressive my bridge officers are for like the first time. Uh, are they going to be assimilated? Are my bridge officers going to be assimilated? That would be terrible. I don't need that. They're all gone. It's spooky. Who and what? Oh, he's trying to assimilate me, huh? I was already a Borg, though. At one point in my life. What an interesting turn of events. Okay, now I'm confused what the heck is gonna happen. I'm assimilated. This is really, really intriguing. Wow, wow, okay, what? What happens now? Are all my bridge officers assimilated too? Yes. Wow. Wait a minute. How does... What happens now? We lost. I lost the mission. <laughs> I've, how is that possible? Drone, state your designation. Whoa. Okay, we have a new mechanic thing going on here. Drone, state your designation. I am resist. Or unit designation one of five. Oh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I'm one of five. Acknowledged. Assimilation complete. Stand by for instructions. Update. Drone one of five. Initiate function at designated alcove. One of five proceeding. Interface with console to complete interrupted subtask. What would have happened if I tried to resist? Okay, I have some kind of a weapon. Whoa! I've got a big old thing on my back. Got a vinculum. Look at this HUD over my face. This is really cool. Okay, I'm loving this. This is this is awesome. Although, I was assimilated at one point. So, shouldn't I be able to resist? Maybe I should have chose the I'm resist option. I think I will on the uh, next time I play this. I will choose that option. Retrieve drone data from regeneration alcove. Uh, this is the first time in a Star Trek Online game that I have lost the mission. <laughs> I got assimilated. Drone one of five. Provide task status. Update. Drone one of five. Assist with drone assimilation at designated console. Interface with medical monitor. Huh, this is, uh, pretty crazy. Complete assimilation of drone. Wow, I'm performing an assimilation. Drone one of five, provide task status. Update, drone one of five, escort damaged drone to Alco for regeneration. Interlink with drone. That's a Starfleet officer. Is escort that- Escort drone to regeneration Alco for integration. Transfer drone data to regeneration alcove. 
Yeah, I wonder what it would have happened. Drone one of five. Provide task status. Update. Drone one of five. Repel borders and weapon control. What would have happened if I had tried to resist? Okay. That should do it. Try it now. Stop them immediately. Wait, did you hear something? Well, I'm assimilating everybody in our team. That's great. Assimilate all intruders. I mean, <laughs> I guess I don't have a choice. I can't do anything else, so uh, I guess we're going to assimilate everybody. We've got company. Fall back to our position. Reinforcements are on their way. Wow, we're actually assimilating people. It's not good. Not a good thing. Drone one of five. Provide task status. Update. Drone one of five. Interlink with designated console and restore weapon control systems. How am I going to, uh... How am I gonna deal with this? Seriously. How am I going to become unassimilated? Nullified. Begin assimilation. Objective update. Recover critical components from neutralized Borg drone. Yeah, this is real interesting here. This turn of events. One of five. Provide task status. Weapon control partially restored. Update. Drone one of five. Neutralize remaining intruders and restore full weapon control. Like, how am I going to become undone here? Target threat nullified. Begin assimilation. I are rooted. Beta team to Dax. We're being overrun. Shields are still up. We can't beam you out. Oh no. That's the rest of Alpha Team. They've been assimilated. Get out of there. Run. Run! Blinking damage detected. Probably not a good thing to attack our own officers here. This is going to come back to bite me in the butt. Target threat nullified. Begin assimilation. They're never going to let me leave this, uh, live this down, are they? You assimilated our whole team. Yeah, that's not a good thing. Not a good thing to go back to Starfleet and say, yeah, well, Complete you know. Complete restoration of weapon control. Interface with designated console. Drone 1 of 5, provide task status. Update, Drone 1 of 5, transport to shield control and neutralize all intruders. Like, I'm doing the exact opposite now. Dax we are undoing everything that we tried to There's do no here. Remember the mission. We need to take those shields out. We can help Beta Team once we're done. Let's make haste then. Right, let's get it done. Well, they're using everything on me. Oh, I'm actually firing on Captain Ezri Dax. Uh, okay, well, I guess that's what we're doing. Wow, am I gonna assimilate her? Am I gonna assimilate Harry? I can't, uh, I can't target him. Interesting. I can select him, but I can't target him. Captain Dax, are you okay? 
Marque, look out! Stop! You you know me! We're allies! Alright, now I'm gonna resist. I'm help! gonna try to. Someone help me! I love it. Whoa! Jab. A thing in me. I love the HUD, by the way. The HUD that it Can had. That was pretty cool. Are you okay? Are you with us? Well, Glad I'm a hear it. Borg again. Welcome back. Are you ready to go? Now the real work begins. Are you able to proceed with the mission? There's no shame in saying no. If you need to recuperate, I understand. Wait, what did you do? I injected you with nanotech designed to sever the link between a drone and the rest of the Borg. It's key to your individual biosignature, and only works for a short time after assimilation. Thankfully, we got to you and your team in time. Okay, well let's proceed. Okay, there's still time to rescue Beta Team, but right now we need to complete our primary mission here. We're locked out of the shield controls now. Do you have any insight from your experience with the Borg that could help us crack the codes? I believe so, yes. I'll need to interlink to a network node. Stand by. Well, I've still got my Borg uh, appendages. Which is interesting because I was already a liberated Borg, so I already had Borg implants. Judging by the look on your face, I'm guessing you weren't successful. The codes were changed. We need to get to their source to access shield Any control. Any idea where we could do that? Yes, and I know where Beta Team is. That's good. Once we rescue Beta Team, we'll send them back here to await transmission of the control codes. That should let us take the shields down before the Borg block access again. Okay, use the console to transport your team to the assimilation chamber. Before I do that, though, um... Well, there's other things here I can do, and I want to make sure I do them. I guess they're all beam to assimilation chamber, beam to assimilation. Oh, they're all the same. Okay, well then it doesn't matter which one I do. Ready weapons, here they come! The Vinculum is a priority target. Okay, yeah, I gotta get the vinculum out of the way, out of the picture. Okay, clear. Oh, we're still clearing. I'm tired of that bolt fire now. I'm just really tired of it. I'll just remodulate if I have to. Oh, there's a lot here. I destroyed the vinculum, didn't I? There was only one, wasn't there? Are we in time? Have they been assimilated? They're inactive. We can help them. Praise Lucar. We need to hurry before more Borg arrives. Okay, we can, uh, so we assimilated them and now we're unassimilating them. Interesting that we did this to all of them. And now we're undoing it to them. Although they will forever, they will forever be changed. I mean, once you are assimilated, you're never the same. 
Beta team is a little rattled, but they're ready to proceed with the mission. Uh, I can relate to that experience. They're ready to transport back to shield control. They'll hold the position and wait for us to provide the access codes. Are you ready to proceed? Yep, let's get this over with. Okay, beam them over. Am I ever going to get my Borg implants removed, though? Nope, I'm going this way. Check the ceilings for Vincula. And watch out for bomber drones! I have a very bad feeling about this. Okay, got that. Not too bad. Another one. Uh, there's the vinculum. there. Let's get that disabled. Did we get everyone back here? No, we did not. There are more. Ah, they got a vinculum. Okay, definitely a lot of them in this area. Let's just go back and make sure I got everyone and everything. I think so. This is a huge area. A little complicated, but I got them all. Let's remodulate, get ready for more. This looks like a command center. Okay, let's see if we can take their shields down here. You won't be shutting anything down, Captain. Oh, what is that? What am I looking at? What, what am I looking at? This is where your resistance. I've got an oval head. Will be annihilated. It's the queen or the king, but who or what? I guess it's no. the king. Borg king instead Can't of a queen. Be. Not always pleasant to look in the mirror, is it, Harry? <laughs> Harry Cam now, is the king. The smart move here would be to surrender for assimilation. Ooh, I did not like the spider. But I know you, Harry. Spider head. Better than anyone. You're going to play the hero. For the last time. 
Okay, well that's a turn, a twist. Didn't expect Harry Kim to be the Borg King of the Borg Kingdom. Why are those large pipes moving? More vincula. Take them out first. Get strong. Stronger than most, to be sure. But as the Borg where you come from say, resistance is futile. I'm gonna let them deal with the Borg and I'll take out the vinculums. Well, I say that and then there are no more vinculums. Did I get them all? Remember, if you're going to shoot at the king, don't miss. Looks like his majesty is joining in on the fight. The king has a nanite shield. It'll reflect our fire. Okay, so how do I destroy him then? It just says defeat the boar king. Nothing special. Check my fire. What do I do? I just don't fire on him? No? Okay. The pipes are moving again. Be ready for more vincula. Okay, I gotta take out vinculum again. Interesting, they have multiple vinculums. Ah, now they're all exposed. I see. Okay, that's not not terrible. I checked my fire. Does that mean don't fire on him? Okay, when do I fire on him? Ah. Target the king and fire. Now is when I fire on him. His nanite shield is back. Check your fire. No, I got him. He's his nanite shield, not back. You found some powerful friends, Harry. I have defeated him. Word to the wise. Watch your allies closely. Their smile might 
be hiding a knife. Oh, shot him in the face. Like, <laughs> jeez. Oh, Kamarke did, huh? Why Why did Kamarke do that? What's, why is she tearing up? What's wrong with her? I'm confused. Why is she crying? I... I had to. I had to! He was stalling. Stalling for time. I will not be assimilated. I will not allow it! I mean, yeah, we were gonna kill him anyway, so it's why is she crying? Right. I don't really, I don't get that. I mean... I, I, I get what they're going for. I don't understand it. Harry. Oh, I mean, the idea was to take Captain out the Borg King anyway. We we're going to kill him. We Somebody to was going to kill ships, him. If it wasn't Kamarke, it was going to be one of us anyway. Don't be sad this about it. That was the goal. Them. That was what we were trying to do. Uh, yeah, so I question that in my wrap up. I will talk about that. I wonder why she's upset. But anyway, um, that face. Wow, that face. I've heard encounters with your mirror self can be rough, but I not only met him, I fought him. Yeah, but it's so not you. We've dealt with enough mirror universe stuff. Even Harry Kim had a duplicate because of the Voyager incident thing that happened and the Kobali, uh, you know, duplicate of him. So that died and then, yeah, you know, all that. So it's like, uh, I... We've seen this kind of stuff before. This is not like a new thing, Harry. You've encountered this kind of stuff. Yeah, I'll be fine. I am a little worried about. It's not Kamarka you. Though. It's just a mirror universe version of you. I know she's been through you. a lot, but to kill someone in cold blood, even a Borg. Ah, uh, that. But no. Okay, I I call issue with that. I'm sorry. Kill someone in cold blood. They. It wasn't cold blood. That in. That implies that you, like, shot someone in the back, you know, like, they didn't see you and they didn't, you weren't having a, uh, you weren't already at conflict with them. We were obviously already at conflict with these Borg. I mean, we killed all the drones. We didn't cry about that. We killed all the drones on this Unimatrix and didn't cry about that. But we, the one Borg King, we cry about that? Huh? What? Huh? Makes sense. Do not. Is... All right, the sooner, sooner we finish here, the sooner we can get her the help she needs. Oh, she doesn't need help. She killed a Borg. She was already killing Borg. She took out all the drones anyway. What's... What's... Oh, why? <laughs> why? Uh, right. Okay. We still have a job to do, no matter what. All right, let's get those command codes. I couldn't read that for a second. It looked like oodle oods to me. Let's get those command oods to beta team, Captain. I want to remodulate. Thank you. Download command codes. Okay, we killed the Borg King because that's what we were here to do. Hello. And uh, now we're moving on. We were going to take out... We needed... We, the goal was to take out the Borg in the first place, right? Just tell me you have the command codes. I do. Sending them to beta team now. It's just like taking out the Borg Queen in first contact, right? Same difference. Same thing. Nobody cried over that. Beta team reports the codes were effective. The Unicomplex shields are down. Okay, let's get out of here. I just want to... Uh, oh, she's gone. <laughs> she's not even waiting for me. She's like, I'm out of here. Bye. No, I just wanted to look around and see if what else was around here. If there was anything around here. But I guess there's not, so... Okay, that's pointless. Go back to ship. Okay. We've got a problem out here. Several, actually. We managed to shut down the central beam they were firing into the vortex while you were captured. But now they're firing three beams at it. It looks like they're trying to escalate whatever it was they were doing to the vortex when we arrived. Then we need to take those emitters down. Easier said than done. While most of the Unicomplex is unshielded, the Borg have large capital ships shielding the emitters. We'll have to deal with those ships before we can take out the emitters. Understood. The Undine Planet Killer is en route to this location, but it won't be able to fire until the emitters are out of commission. 
We need to take them down as soon as possible. Looks like we've got our work cut out for us. The Undine are still with us, moving into formation. They're doing their part, Captain. Time to do ours. If we don't take these emitters out, we all lose. Oh, I see. This was just one of the emitters. That's why it had a symbol on it. And now we have to take out all the other ones. So basically, we have to do what we did previously and just do it all again. And this time, I'm definitely going to focus on the platform stuff before I focus on, like, the ships. Picking up a localized defense field around the emitter. Some type of TCM. Well, they have tractor beams too. Well, that's no fun. Okay, I guess I have to deal with them because I can't move. <laughs> if I can't move, I can't do anything. Disrupt the emitter. Nice work. Beta emitter is vulnerable. Take it out. The emitter beta is down. Next stop, point gamma. Not a problem. Octahedron. Ooh. Ooh. We got an octahedron. Ooh. That's gonna be fun. Okay. That octahedron won't go down without a fight. It's in our way, Captain. Take it down. Uh, I will. But first, I want to get rid of these platforms. Because if they tractor me, I won't be able to move. Getting rid of all of these platforms first. Rear shield failing. Right shield failing. I'll shield deal with the octahedron last. Good. Not good. There we go. Okay, now we'll go for the octave run. Yeah, 
That was not too bad at all. That uh, octahedron went down a lot faster than I thought it would, a lot easier. Emitter Gamma's defense field is down. You know what to do. I'm picking up a huge energy source at Point Delta. We need to get over there, fast. Okay, what do we have here? Reading the planet killer on long range sensors. It'll be here soon. Right. No pressure. Malfunction vessels. The situation will severe. Destroy the final emitter. Uh oh. Do the rest. Understood. Um, oh, Run. I heard a V'ger noise. Now, best speed to Point Delta. No time to lose. Um, yep. Is that a V'ger? Yeah, that's a V'ger. Of course it is. Mirror Universe V'ger. Borg V'ger thing. They assimilated it. Okay, well, that's fun. Actually, that is kind of fun. Let's, uh, I know that I need to take... Oh, my audio went away. Warning. Ship is under attack. Let's take out the assimilators first. What the hell? Oh, energy bolt. It must be a Unimatrix vessel. They're flagship. Ow. Oh, I'm flying into a bubble. Trying to take out the peripherals, like the stuff that's like on the sides. Get that out of the way first, and then I will deal with the Unimatrix last. energy bolt. Alright, now I think we can take this thing out. I don't think it'll be that difficult, honestly. Except for, uh, the tractor beams. I'm gonna use my, uh, might need to use my, uh, have not used it before, my offensive configuration. I don't use it much, my molecular deconstruction beam, but I guess I don't need to now, it's coming down pretty good. I just can't move because of the darn tractor beams. We've almost got it. Almost got it. Almost don't have it. There we go, okay. Molecular deconstruction beam. We did it! The Borg flagship is down!
That was pretty fun. I enjoyed that. There goes its defense field. Take it out. That's it. Get to a safe distance. The planet killer is clear to fire. That was a pretty good battle right there. I enjoyed that a lot. That was fun. All right, where am I supposed to get to? Guess it doesn't matter. So we did need the Undine's help. At the end of it all, we did need the Undine's help. Oh wow, is that a tear in the fabric of space and time? Or universe? To the Alliance and Undine Vessel. Welcome to the Alliance. I offer sincere greetings. You have succeeded against staggering odds. Okay, I thought Ethereans couldn't survive in fluidic space. Correct. However, the Harmony is safely within the Spatial Anomaly, once occupied by the Unicomplex. There is no fluidic material of any kind in here. It is, as you might say, a pocket of normal space. I see. Why are you within the Anomaly? A valid question. We are here to prevent another incursion by the Borg Kingdom. They do not give up easily. We believe that unchecked, the odds of them attempting to recreate a vortex are high. Simply put, we must be vigilant. I understand. Comms, hail the Undine. They'll want an explanation. I trust you have detected the vessel within the new anomaly. We have. They are the Ethereans, our allies against the Borg. This is most irregular. Under normal circumstances, we would order them to depart the sector or face destruction. But as we both know, these are not normal circumstances. As long as that anomaly is in place, these Ethereans are protected from any attack. We will be watching them, however. Again, how progressive of this Undine. Uh, it's unexpected behavior. Perhaps the Alliance can be of assistance with that. A generous offer, but we must decline at this time. This will be an internal matter for us. All right, contact us if you change your mind. I can't say I'm surprised they turned down your offer. Still... What happened here today may very well be the first step toward better relations with the Undine in the future. It really does sound like it, doesn't it? Indeed. I think it's time for us to go home. Wouldn't want to wear out our welcome, after all. Are you ready to depart? Yeah, I guess we're done. We're done. Didn't quite go as I thought it would. That was an interesting uh, mission. I thought the Ethereans would be involved more, and they weren't. But, yeah, we'll talk about all that. We made it. I expect there are plenty of people eagerly awaiting our report on DS9. Then mm -hmm. let's not keep them waiting. Okay, let's go beam down to DS9. Before we turn in our report, let's stop by medical and have those Borg implants removed. Oh yeah, I forgot about I that. I happen to know one of the doctors there very well. Oh, do you now? He'll take good care of you. I'll let them know you're coming. Are you ready to go? I am. Is Bashir still on DS9? I don't think so. Wouldn't he not be there now? Wow, that was definitely an involved... Definitely an involved mission. There was a lot going on there, and uh, very long. But see, here's the thing about being a liberated Borg. I already had implants before. There you are. Welcome back. The procedure was a complete success. No more Borg implants for you. Uh, but I did. I do have. Is the patient clear for duty, Doctor? I do have Borg yes, implants. Of then, if you're up for it, the command staff wants to debrief us. So they removed. Be safe out there. Doctor's orders. They they removed my. 
interesting look he gave there. They removed my Borg kingdom implants, but they did not remove my um, assimilated Borg implants I had from previous, so that's a little weird. Weirdness going on there. Okay, well, well let's talk to everybody, right? Let's, uh, oh, we'll end with Kim and Dax. Let's talk to Kumarke. Well, my friend, once again, we have prevented a great calamity. It's becoming something of a specialty for us, I think. Yes, how are you feeling? Our mission was harrowing, to say the least. I'm perfectly fine, thank you. The Lucari are quite resilient people. I will endure. Don't worry. Don't hesitate to seek help from a counselor. The burden of command can be quite heavy. Yes, yes, you're right, of course. Thank you for the kind advice. You're welcome. And Tholian. Your report on the events in Fluidic Space was quite thorough. The temporary alliance with the Undine was unexpected, as was the arrival of the Ethereans. That's putting it mildly. I will update the leaders of the Assembly. I suspect they will want to monitor the situation in Fluidic Space quite closely. Should another incursion occur, they will want to take action. I don't think the Borg Kingdom will be a problem for some time. It's wise to remain vigilant. Okay, now let's talk to Kim and we'll end with Dex. I don't know about you, but it's good to be back. I don't plan on visiting Fluidic Space again anytime soon. Let's hope we don't have to. I'm still processing the fact that we fought alongside the Undine. They aren't exactly known for being team players, at least as far as the Alliance is concerned. Agreed. Perhaps we're seeing a new direction. Anything's possible. But I wouldn't expect an invitation to any holiday parties from them anytime soon. For now, it's like a wise man once said. It's in the purview of the diplomats. Indeed, it'll be interesting to see what happens. All right, and Dax. I have to say, Borg modifications weren't a good look for you. Uh, but I, Thankfully, I, they're on my face my already. What are you talking about? was available to remove those. Besides being my husband, Julian's one of Starfleet Medical's best. I appreciate Dr. Bashir's efforts, Captain. Thank you. Don't mention it. Between you and me, I'm concerned about Kamarke. I was a counselor on GS9 during the Dominion War. I know post-traumatic stress when I see it. I'm concerned. She's a fine officer. We'll need people like her out there if the Borg Kingdom comes back for a rematch. That's a worry for another day, though. For now, their invasion is over. Thanks for all you and your crew did to make that happen. You're welcome. Safe travels, Captain Dax. Report to the leader. Oh, Quinn. I reviewed your after-action report. Well done. Losing fluidic space to the Borg Kingdom would have been disastrous. Fortunately, our unlikely allies helped us turn the tide. Agreed. This could be a turning point for our relations with the Undine. More than a few members of the Diplomatic Corps are enthused about the possibilities. I can imagine. I prefer the Undine as allies, not enemies. They could be very powerful allies. I wonder if we'll get a uh, post credit scene. Oh, no? Okay. Okay, well, let's turn this in. Joyous greetings, friend. Your mission was truly a successful venture. Along with the Undine, you have repelled the forces of the Borg Kingdom and disrupted their command structure. With luck, Many cycles will pass before they will be able to pose a threat to us again. For that, the Ethereum Concordium owes you our sincere pledge of gratitude. Your efforts prove, once again, that through harmony, we are secure. Through unity, we are strong. May our friendship continue to grow deeper in the cycles to come. All right. Mirror Borg implants. Oh. Yeah, that would have been a spoiler, I assume. And then a universal kit module of devouring nanite cloud. Ooh, I have to look at that. Could be very interesting for a Borg character to have that. And I do have a Borg character. I've got a character that is completely, like, got everything on ground and space Borg related. So, that could be a real interesting item. And I will look at that and uh, play with those. Not in this video. But if I find it interesting, I may look at them in another video. But I think it's time to do a summary and review of 
this mission that we just played. Uh, but first, I'm going to go back to ESD and get myself positioned here. If the game will load, please. Don't you just love it when it hangs for no reason? Love my ship. This is a really fun ship to play with, honestly. All right, Earth, space dock. Let's go in front of the stars and talk about this. As we overlook Earth, this is a good spot to talk about this. So, I have now played the new mission, Scorpion's Abyss, in the 14th anniversary for Star Trek Online called Both Worlds, I think. Something like that. And this was a very long mission. That's the first thing I want to mention because I've been recording now for an hour and a half now. I did take my time, I read all the dialogue, I explored, and so if you do that, yeah, this could be an hour to an hour and a half mission. Now if you just go through it as quickly as possible, perhaps not. Uh, but it is a bit long, so these missions seem to be getting longer and longer, like they're really involved uh, in this game now. So that's just something I wanted to mention that I've noticed the length of these missions keep getting more and more involved. They probably could have split this up into two missions, to be honest with you, and that would have been okay with me. I would have maybe enjoyed that better. I don't know that the missions need to be that long. Like, I can understand 30 to 45 minutes for a mission, but I would say 45 minutes should be like the cutoff point. Shouldn't go beyond that for playing a mission, right? Should be like 30 to 45 minutes, you know, max there. That's just my opinion, though. Uh, I'm sure you may have different opinions, but that's mine. Um, all right, so let's talk about this. So we were introduced to the Ethereans again, and we had the little briefing on DS9. I had thought the Ethereans would have played a bigger role in this mission, and they did not. I mean, I guess they buffed us with power and weapons and shields or something. I don't know. But even though they said that they buffed us with those things, we never saw it in our gameplay. Our ship did not have new abilities. Our shields did not have new abilities. I had no new powers to activate or turn on. So in reality, Sure, they're saying that they buffed us with these new remodulated frequencies and all this stuff, but we never saw the result of that. So it's just words. In our actual gameplay of the game, we didn't feel that buff. We didn't have that buff. There wasn't something new to activate or something new to use, so that's a bit of a letdown. So really, there's no difference. It's just basically whatever your powers and however your, your ground abilities and space abilities are set up for you for your playthrough that's just what you're going to get there's really nothing special no, you're not more powerful in this mission than you were in any other part of the game you're just not so okay you know you got that i thought that the ethereans might actually show up and fight that that they gave that little insight that they can't exist in fluidic space and i guess that's the excuse for leaving us on their own. Maybe they thought that if the Ethereans were there, it would have been too OP. And so the, in for the gameplay's sake, they just had to not have the Ethereans there. And that was the excuse to not put the Ethereans in the mission like that. Like fighting alongside you it would have just been too much. But I would have liked to have fi fought alongside the Ethereans. I, I want that. I wanted to see more of that. I wanted to see more of their ships. I wanted to actually go on board one of their ships and see it and fight on the ground with an Ethereum. That would have been fun and entertaining. Uh, so I'm a little disappointed that we didn't have that chance to do that. I was a little let down by that. Okay, next part, Ezri Dax. Loved having her in this mission. That was a really good addition. 
So in previous missions of Star Trek Online, when they brought in Harry Kim, that's been a lot of fun. And they did a lot of stuff with Harry Kim, so it was good to have him back in the game. And now they're doing the same with Ezri. They have brought her in. And I really, really enjoyed that. I enjoyed having her as on the mission with us. Although we, we got to fight side by side with her, I was hoping for a little bit more, but it was still good. And all the dialogue we had... And I just want to say, it is absolutely great to have the actress voicing her, Nicole DeBoer. I love her. I love her. And no joke, I'm going to give you a little insight about my history with Nicole DeBoer. Yes, I have a history. Okay, I don't have a history. I have a TV history with her. I would say that I, I, I think... I think DS9 might have been the first time I have seen her on screen. That I can't recall which show I saw her on first. I just know that that I had seen her on DS9 and when she was on DS9 I'm I'm not going to lie. This is uh, maybe crazy on my part, but when she was introduced to DS9, I had a huge crush on her. Absolutely had a huge crush on her. Uh, I was in love with her. I mean, I'm sad that Jadzia, you know, had to leave. But when Ezri took over the Dax role, I had a crush on her. I'm, I'm going to admit that. Straight up. I'm also aware of her from uh, a movie. It is uh, called The Cube or Cube from 1997. If you have never seen the, uh, the movie The Cube or Cube 1997, go watch that movie. Um, you'll also find another actor from a, another series. I will not spoil it what actor and what series. I want you to experience that yourself. But if you are a sci-fi fan and have seen other sci-fi shows, like Star Trek, other shows, you will recognize an actor in the Cube movie from 97 playing alongside Nicole DeBoer. So I recommend watching that movie, and I think you'll enjoy that little treat. But I saw her in that movie, and I loved her in that movie. Loved her in that movie. I also saw her in another show, a TV show, um, in the early 2000s. And I cannot remember the name of it. The Dead... Dead something. Um, crap, it's going to drive me crazy now, because I can't repeat the exact show name to you, but it is... Dead, dead Zone. The Dead Zone? I think that might be it. Dead Zone. Or The Dead Zone. That was a great series. It also has a movie uh, with uh, Christopher Walken in it. So that this show is like a remake of that movie turned into like a TV show. And what a great show. But she shows up as a character in that show from time to time. So I really uh, enjoyed her in that show, The Dead Zone. So those are two things I had seen her in, uh, the Cube movie and the Dead Zone, and then obviously DS9. But I love the actress, and uh, yeah, really, uh, she. I mean, I know that people were a little iffy on her at first coming into DS9 simply because the way they wrote her character. She was supposed to be this young person who wasn't fit for carrying a symbiote you know they that's how they wrote her but then she turned out so great i mean continued to turn out so great and so really matured and and became a really good character in ds9 so i've really enjoyed her i just want to say i'm glad they brought her into star trek online uh they mentioned her husband now um bashir um i mean yeah just really good uh so i enjoyed having her in this game i love that part of the mission that was awesome what else um we had some pretty good space battles. At first, I was a little concerned that they, they weren't going to be hard enough. Like, it seemed like we were able to tear through the Mirror Universe Borg a little easy. But then, as we got into that final section, especially when we had to deal with the emitters, yeah, you really had to uh, to work on that one. They had a octahedron thing. They had a, 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 a V'ger flagship Unimatrix thing. They had uh, all the platforms. Those were the most annoying were the tractor beam platforms. I would say try to take those out first before the other ships. But yeah, the tractor beams were extremely annoying. 
My gosh, that was annoying. But it was still a good battle. All that was a good battle, so I really enjoyed the space battle. Um, the ground stuff is also good. Uh, the vinculums get very annoying because you have to really target those and take those out first and then take out the rest of the Borg. So, you know, that it's a little bit annoying, but you can get through that. The middle section of that ground mission where you are assimilated is a complete shocker. Complete shocker. Like, your entire uh, bridge officer team and yourself gets assimilated. And you basically lose the mission at that point, and you start assimilating other people. Like, what a thing. How do we apologize for that? Um, I was interested to know what hitting the button that said I can resist, what that would have done. I just gave into it. I don't know why I chose that. I just did. I wonder what would have happened if I chose the other option, though. In my second playthrough, I'll go back and choose that other option and see what happens or if anything is even different. I don't know. Probably not. But I'll check it out anyway. So that was a fun little section of the game that you had there where you're actually assimilating people. Now, I will say that the cure, the way to uh, fix us from this Borg assimilation, it was a bit of a deus ex machina. Absolutely. Because out of the blue, she pulls this hypospray syringe thing from nowhere they've never talked about it before and she's like oh yeah by the way i have this nanoprobe stuff that can unassimilate you and sever your link from the collective and uh oh yeah we got it handy right here we just didn't tell you about it but yeah we'll just jab this in you and you'll be fine and then we did that for all the other people too okay that's a deus ex machina right there that that really is came out of nowhere uh, but I guess they had to do something to cure us. So that was a bit of a weak point, but not too weak. Just I get why it had to be done. It was just came out of nowhere. But okay, they cured us. We're fine. Now, interestingly, I'm, I was a liberated Borg. This character is a liberated Borg, so it didn't recognize that it was. And so, yeah, they removed all my Borg implants from the Borg kingdom, but I still have my liberated Borg implants, so... They didn't remove those. <laughs> Why did they leave those? So that's a little weird. I thought that there might have been something unique about that, though, because I was a liberated Borg, that trying to assimilate me into the Borg kingdom would have, like, been able to resist them or have some kind of something there, but I didn't see anything. Nothing happened. Maybe if I chose the I can resist option, maybe that would have been that and I could have done something. I will try that. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. So there's all of that. Um, so that's kind of the basic storyline elements. Oh yeah, the Undine, the Undine, the Undine coming into this very progressive Undine. There, I was talking about that. He was very, um, he was very willing to work with us. So this could be opening up new possibilities for the Undine in the Star Trek universe. Like, could they become our allies? They are very powerful, extremely powerful. Imagine having them as allies. Maybe one day in the future they become part of the Federation. Like, wouldn't that be interesting? But this is the start of a path toward that. That is just really interesting that the Undine have become like enemies in Voyager all the way to where they are now is just so vastly different. And I love that growth for them. I really, really love that growth. We're seeing it in Star Trek Online. We didn't see it much in Voyager, a little bit, but we're really seeing it in Star Trek Online. And I'm loving that. And this is something like where a game can, you know, push and develop on. So I love seeing stuff like that. And it gives you, it makes you think, what if they had done this in TV shows? You know, what if they had done some of this in like Picard or something like that and pushed forward these ideas in actual TV shows? No, they have to leave it up to the game to do it. Star Trek Online is doing it way better than TV shows like Picard or something like that. But anyway, we'll move on from that. Um, I wanted to talk about the visuals just real quick. I know I talked about it earlier. I don't think they quite got Esri Dax's visuals, her face looking quite right there. I think the drawing they have for the wallpaper looks a lot better than what they have for the NPC character. I think her eyes are just a little too big here. Uh, a little cartoonish. But I guess we just have to give them a little bit of a, a little bit of flex on that only because the they are limited 
with the technology in this game to what they can do today with uh, all these visuals. It's an extremely dated game engine and it is extremely limited and the texture sizes are limited and everything is limited. The, the, the models are limited, the polygons, the, everything's limited in this game extremely. So I have to give them just a little bit of an excuse for that. So I won't say any more about that. As for, there was something else I wanted to talk about and I can't think about what it was now. Hmm. Yeah, it's not coming to me at the moment, uh, but there definitely was something else I wanted to discuss. But yeah, anyway, I enjoyed this mission and I guess what I'm real curious about is where they're going to take this storyline because, uh, oh, I know, I remember what it is now. I remember what it is. Um, Kings and Queens is the name of the storyline that we're under. You had Wish Upon a Star, you had Taken by Surprise, you had Scorpion's Abyss now. But what comes next? Obviously, this is not the last one. This is not, I feel this is not going to be the last of the Boar Kingdom that we hear, even though we took down the Boar King. I, or, or what, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I just don't think that's the last. So what's going to be the next thing? What's going to, what could follow this? This almost sounds like Kumarke's story. Because look how it starts out. It starts with Kumarke. And it continues and ends here in Scorpion's Abyss with Kumarke and this idea that she's sad about killing the Boar King or whatever. So this almost sounds like a Kumarke story. I, this is, yes, this involves the Boar Kingdom and the Aetherians, but really this is more of a story about Kumarke and her progression. She started as a very innocent person you know, when we introduced her to exploring exploring space way back in one of those missions way back here, you know. Um, yeah, where was it actually? New Frontiers, I guess? Yeah, New Frontiers. So, maybe even future, some of Future Proof too, but definitely New Frontiers. Like, when we, when we were first, like, introduced to Kumarke way back then, she was very innocent. And now, she seems to be moving into feeling guilty for, she's actually, like, killing people in quote cold blood she has progressed from an innocent person to now a in her mind a cold-blooded killer so this almost seems like a kumarke story to me that's developing from start to finish if that's where they're going and that's very interesting and i don't know if anyone else has picked up on that but that's kind of what i'm seeing kumarke started innocent and she's ending up as a cold-blooded killer. <laughs> is that where they're headed with her? Is she going to become the enemy? Is she going to be the big bad? That might be where they're headed with it. And if so, that's very not what I thought this storyline would be. So that could be interesting. But let's talk about Kumarke, because that is what I wanted to talk about. She seemed very sad about killing the Boar King, which was the Harry Kim of the Mirror Universe. But why? why right we went through that whole unimatrix complex thing killing other borg which were people at once she was she didn't have any concern doing that she wasn't sad or upset for taking those other borg out right and even up to now she's never shown any regret about that at all so that's why when we get to having to take Harry Kim out, the the Borg, Harry Kim, Borg King, why is she so distraught by that? Why is that one getting to her? I don't understand that. The whole goal coming into this was to destroy the mirror Borg anyway. That's what we were doing, right? We wanted to destroy them. That's what we were trying to do. So if we encountered the Borg King... Obviously, we were going to take him out. We weren't just going to let him live. So, I mean, yeah, she shot him, but that's what we were doing. We were He was shooting us. Like, it would be different, like I said, if you shoot somebody in cold blood from behind and they don't see you coming and you're not having an active fight with them. That's different. That's not what was happening here. What was happening here is we were having an active fight with him 
he was shooting at us, which gave us the right then to shoot back at him. The end goal of this was either him assimilating us or us killing him. That was it. And that was the choice. And those were the choices. That seemed very clear to me. I just don't understand why. Did she not understand that? Did she think we were trying to capture him and put him in prison or something? Because that's not what we were doing. Not at all. You know? So I just don't understand why she's so hurt by that. I don't know. I don't get it. I, I kind of get it, but I don't get it. So somebody can help explain that to me. Again, I think she's upset because she's the one who shot the final shot. She shot him in the face, of all things. But she's the one that shot the final shot and killed him. So maybe that's why she's upset. But we were all trying to do that in the first place. We weren't going to let him go at that point. We had him dead to rights. We were not going to let him go. That was the end result. <sighs> yeah, that one's going to need some more explanation for me. But anyway, that's my thoughts there. But if... If the idea is that they keep saying she needs to go see a counselor, if the idea is that she's going to become the big bad now, what a, what a, what a story arc for her. I will say that. And then, so yeah, I don't know. We did, uh, my character also gave a weird look at himself after the Borg implants were removed. He looked at his hand oddly. I wonder if that means that he's a little, is he still under the control of the Borg? You know, could that be a thing? I don't know. I'm just putting that thought out there. Uh, also, Harry Kim's remarks about himself. Yes, he says he fought himself, but it's not him. It's not the Harry of this. Of It's not him. It's a different universe, Harry. I get it. It would be a little weird, but he's kind of used to that by now, fighting himself. He had to deal with his Kobali self remember already so this would not be a new experience for him this would be already something he's experienced so that's why that one's a little odd to me also it's like um hello past experiences you've experienced something similar to this already that should not be too much of a surprise or a shocker plus he was a borg he's he's not a human anymore he's a borg totally changed uh so yeah i don't know just some random thoughts there. Let's look really quickly at this reward. A universal kit module, devouring nanite cloud, 4.5 meter radius, nanite cloud, it deals physical damage each second, 50% shield penetration, plus 300 energy damage resistance rating, reflects up to 150% incoming energy damage back to the target, and uh, cannot critically hit. And it can remove up to 99 effects. It releases three level, three level devouring nanite clouds for 30 seconds. That's cool. Wonder if I can engage it while I'm on the ground. Probably not. Mm. Can't use that right now. You know what? I want to see this thing in use. We're going to make a little side trip, everyone. I just want to see this thing in use. I'm curious. I'm curious. So let's do a little test, shall we? I'm going to go to Nimbus. It's the easiest place to test something like this. I'm going to go to Nimbus, and we're going to check this uh, thing out. I'm real interested in it. I also want to look at the Borg implants thing. I'm guessing it's just a visual, but we'll check it out. Um, Come on, thing. Load. It's so slow to load sometimes. You know what I mean? This is going to be a really long video. Yeah, we're at two hours of recording, so... If you are still watching two hours later... Oh, I'm stuck on a star. If you are still watching this after two hours, uh, leave a comment below and let me know that you watched to this point. Because if you did, Amen to you. Amen to you. And thank you for watching all the way to here. It is extremely exciting and I appreciate it. Ah. 
I'm going to the wrong place. Well, ain't that a thing. Okay, Nimbus. Come on, you can load. I know you can do it. Come on, game. You've got it. I can feel it. Let's go. I just want to see what this thing does, right? We're just going to go do something real simple here on Nimbus. Try it out. Let's go. Come on. Let's look at the visual thing, too. Uh, was this, right? No, it wasn't that. Well, where'd it go? Oh, I guess it's a... Okay, it's a it's a tailor unlock, I'm betting. All right. Uh, I'm going to put uh, all my people on passive. I'm going to run past these guys. I'm going to go up into that area. It's the best place to demonstrate this. Here it is. Does physical damage, huh? Yeah, uh, let's try this out. All right, activate it. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Okay, and it's over. Huh. Okay, that's kind of cool. I, I get it. I'll do it one more time. We'll let it cool down. I'll do it one more time. Where'd these things come from? They followed me. All right, almost got it. Let's have this guy fire on me. Yeah, uh, that's kind of cool. I like it. Bye-bye. All right. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Neat little thing. Well, everyone, I guess that's it. We played the mission. We tried out the reward. And I guess the other item is uh, an unlock in the tailor. I guess I would need to go to the tailor to unlock it and check it out. But probably just a visual. But yeah, that was really cool. I enjoyed the mission and I look forward to seeing what they come out with next. But that was Scorpion's Abyss in Star Trek Online. Let me know below what you think of the mission. What are your thoughts overall? Uh, did you enjoy it? Was it fun for you? What would you have changed with it? What would you do differently? Yeah, what are your overall thoughts? I look forward to hearing them. But uh, that's going to be it. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for watching. And stay tuned for the next one.